welcome to Duncan Thorne Shields YouTube channel. I managed to uh, con Duncan into convincing his friend to pay me thousands and thousands of dollars as a professional Counter-Strike player, so maybe he can convince you that some of his analysis is correct. Astralis' victory at the ESL Pro League Season 8 Finals not only won them the first prize at that tournament, not only added another trophy to their incredible haul for this year, extended their era, increased the level of dominance they've been able to display of their opponents, but not insignificantly, even though it's not a, a tangible thing beyond the money, allowed them to become the first ever champions of the Intel Grand Slam. Now, Season one of the Intel Grand Slam, obviously season one, so we never had this before. The concept is a great one. It was that Intel sponsored a, a, a prize, kind of a bounty, that ESL tournaments, so ESL1, IEM, EPL, would be included in, and any team that could win four such tournaments within a 10 tournament span, which only began the 10 tournament window, when you won your first of those events, won a million dollars. That was the thing. And it was that, no, sorry, the first team to do so won a million dollars. Now, it was later on explained how the system resets itself if someone does win and it would continue and another person would be able to win an Intel Grand Slam and it wasn't just only one team that would do it. An interesting wrinkle they added was they had a $100,000 denial or sort of a uh, Grand Slam winner killer bounty where any team who had won three titles made it to the final and was beaten by someone to deny them the Grand Slam, the team that beat them would get $100,000. So, you know, not a million, they don't get the million themselves, but still a pretty crazy prize money kind of bounty. Now, the reason why this is cool to me is because it actually reminds me in a different sense, because this was about prestige, not money, of in StarCraft Brood War, in South Korean esports, where they had their own system, where if you won three golden mice, you became, the, the if you won three OSL titles, you became a golden mouse winner, and you got an actual golden mouse trophy. And by the way, no one ever won more than three of those titles, but a few people did win that, that trophy. If you won three MSL titles, you became a golden badge winner and had a golden badge. Again, nobody ever got more than three titles, but a number of people did get those three titles. And it's what's cool about it is it's a way to show additional status or prestige to people who are multiple time champions. You're not just celebrating each championship they win and the fact that they've won a lot of championships, but the number of championships they won, the span of time you've done it in. Now, that wasn't as big a deal in Brood War. There wasn't a set time. You didn't get an extra amount of money. You just got this trophy and the status from that. In this particular scenario, there's a, a tension involved in it. It adds a meta narrative to the tournament circuit. It gives you extra storylines you can build up and carry on. And it means that there's a special feat because of the limited amount of time. And even if you've won the three titles and someone else hasn't won any titles, they then have an extra meta reason and even a tangible reason in terms of the money to beat you elsewhere. Because even if you eventually win that million dollars, they can get $100,000 along the way. I mean, there could have been some crazy scenario where let's say... Faze had played Astralis in all these finals, and then Astralis eventually did win the million and denied Faze all the way along the way and had won 400,000 extra as well. Wouldn't that be insane? Could have happened. So the interesting thing about this is, when it was first instituted, I saw a lot of really bad hot takes from people who were like, oh, it's too hard. How can anyone win the four out of the 10 events? And as someone said on Twitter, I forget who it was quite pithily, it's like, you know, the aim is not that someone definitely should win the million dollars, right? It's supposed to be really hard, so that if you win, that's why you get a free million dollars. You already get the prize money for the tournaments you win anyway. You already get status, acclaim, fame, your salary to be a top player in the world. You get a million dollars for free on top of that for winning these tournaments when you get the four out of the 10. So that made perfect sense. But interestingly enough, we actually looked the whole way through as if we were going to have someone who was a champion until a certain point when, funnily enough, Astralis started winning and then no one actually could have been certain. So the first team that looked like they were going to win this Grand Slam was SK Gaming because when the Intel Grand Slam was announced, I believe it was, it was announced actually long after the first event that qualified for it, which was ESL1 Clone 2017. And obviously now the first season ends on EPL Season 8 because Astralis won it. SK had obviously over the summer prior to the major, so including ESL1 Clone, <coughs> won five out of six events. Now, that's just five out of six events in the general calendar. Only one of those tournaments, the last of the six, was included in the Grand Slam, which was ESL1 Cologne that they beat famously 
defeating Cloud9 in the final. Then they went and won EPL Season 6 later in the year. Obviously, they had a period where they changed from Phelps to Bolts and they had their issues. They didn't win the major. They had a couple of tournaments that were problems. But they won EPL Season 6 over FaZe Clan. That made their second win. At the time, they were dominating FaZe Clan every time they met them. There was no other clear team who should be number one. Remember, Astralis had the problems with Device and they still had Kirby in the lineup. G2 fell off massively after their Malmo win. You had a, a team Liquid was good, but was only placing second. And then even they fell off. Cloud9 actually was only a top four level team. Wasn't ever making finals at this point in time. So quite frankly, it looked as though this team was going to be the one that had, first of all, be the, the definitely the first team to get to three titles and potentially even win the, the Grand Slam itself. Itself. I mean, this is a team that had one of the best cores of all time and a team that seemed destined to win because the style of play they had was amazing at comebacks, so hard to put away, ability to win on maps that aren't even your strongest at the morning, ability to beat very dangerous opponents and shut them down entirely or frustrate them and make them play out and choke or almost like give up the game themselves as you sometimes saw from FaZe Clan. Funnily enough though, SK not only never got to a third win, they dropped off so heavily from being an elite team. Arguably, you could argue they never got back to that status again. I think it's a pretty, pretty reasonable argument. And in fact, they never made another final of one of the tournaments eligible for the Intel Grand Slam. Then though, at the same time that SK had reached two, we had another team in the wings, right? Because we had the FaZe Clan, who after the player break, which was after ESL1 clone, and actually after the major, which at that point in time was... Um, let me think, PGL Krakow, they had the super team, obviously, with Guardian and Olaf Meister recruited. Now, after flunking DreamHack Malmo, they came into ESL New York, which is one of the tournaments that accounted, along with Malmo, and they blasted this tournament completely. They wrecked everyone. They won every single map that they played. They won a bazillion pistol rounds. Nico had a godlike score. They beat Team Liquid in the final. Team Liquid's second final in a row. They'd also been in the final at the ES... I think it was ESG Mykonos was the name of the tournament. At this point in time, everyone was thinking, this is a really scary team. But believe it or not, in terms of the context of the Intel Grand Slam, FaZe would then go on to lose in three straight finals of tournaments that would count towards the victory. They lost in the IAM Auckland final to NIP, 3-2. They lost in the EPL Season 6 final to SK, 1-3, 3-1. And they lost in the IAM 12 World Championship final to Fnatic, Three to two. So three different opponents. And if they had won these three titles, they would already have won the Grand Slam, the million dollars, and the Grand Slam season one would have ended in March 2018. Nonetheless, after failing those three times, being stuck on one win, Olaf Meister had to go out the lineup. At this point in time, the lineup's broken apart. They had to bring in Exist, who'd been booted from NIP as their stand-in. Inexplicably, despite playing terribly at the beginning of the tournament, where they almost lost to that uh, Greyhound team who'd beaten SK. They come all the way back and in the grand final of IEM 13 Sydney, with Exist as a stand-in, they beat Astralis to get their second win. Now, the reason why this is notable so all is they'd lost all these finals with Olaf Meister. The lineup looked better with Olaf Meister. Astralis was already, at this point in time, considered the team that was going to become the dominant team. they just won Dream at Masters, Malmo, uh, Marseille, rather, and they looked so strong up to this final. And even in the final, played very well. It was three incredibly close map wins. So somehow, Fears gets to two wins. But because it's with a stand-in, because Olaf's gone, no one knows when he's coming back. And now Astralis is the number one team, or at least people had their questions because they lost there. They thought, oh, they're choking again. Would FaZe ever make it to the Grand Slam win? Didn't seem so now. I mean, most of us wrote them off of ever being a team that would be number one again. In fact, they never were, obviously, beyond this point. But months later, they somehow got to a third win. They were the first team to reach three wins. They won ESL1 Belo Horizonte. And this was a tournament that they won again with a stand-in, not even exists this time, this time with Croman, a player actually with very little competitive history and who'd never been in an elite level team. Interestingly, after that, with their third win, they had two tournaments left on the calendar within the 10 tournament span to secure the Grand Slam. They needed to win either ESL1 Cologne or DreamHack Masters Stockholm. They failed to make even the final of either of those events. They made the semi-final of ESL1 Cologne and they lost to Big there, which was a killer because the other semi-final had already been played and Astralis had been beaten by Na'Vi. So potentially you could have played Na'Vi in the final, who at that point in time had never won a really big event with Simple and uh, Electronic in the lineup. 
And you could have won it without having to beat Astralis and you would have gotten the Intel Grand Slam. They failed to. And then obviously at DreamHack Masters Stockholm, they went out in the round of it to mouse spots anyway, and it just didn't matter. Now, that means that because they never made a final of any of those two events, the $100,000 bounty for denying them the Grand Slam was never activated and no one could ever win it. Now, if FaZe Clan had won the tournament, just as if SK had won, it would have made sense with how clutch their lineup was and the dominance they had over FaZe at the time. And Astralis was an even matchup. Astralis didn't often make the finals and Astralis lost to FaZe. Like that would have made sense in historical context for SK to win it. Would have made sense for FaZe with Olaf Meister to have won it and won all those finals they were in. Obviously, they were a team with massive expectations, incredibly powerful, one of the all-time great teams, but failed to live up to their billing. If they could have won it with Croman. This would have been amazing because that would have mean they'd have won the Grand Slam with two different standings in place of the most accomplished and decorated player in the lineup, Olaf Meister, which would make it not only an amazing feat, but an inexplicable feat almost, absolutely miraculous. It also, think about it, would have really changed Carrigan's storyline as a leader because he would have had more success with FaZe Clan. Maybe he wouldn't have been removed. He would have also had more success in the context of he's not in Astralis. Now people look at Astralis and go, oh, but he wishes he hadn't been kicked from that team now. At this point in time, he was in position to say, who gives a fuck about Astralis? I'm winning a million dollars and loads of events this year. And who's Astralis? They might have come on later in the year, right? So then we came to the team who did win the, the Grand Slam, and that was Astralis. They started out by winning DreamHack Masters Marseille. That was their first win. They'd already had the lineup for a couple of events before. They'd finished... Uh, top eight at the Star Series, which wasn't a tournament counted. They'd finished uh, top four at IEM Kanovice, losing to FaZe Clan with Olaf Meister there, which was a tournament that was counted. Their first win came at Dream at Masters Marseille, where they were in dominant form. Everyone saw even online they were crazy. Cobblestone was still in the map pool, but they still stormed the whole event. They only basically had Team Liquid take them close, which was an interesting sort of foreshadowing of what the rest of the year would be for Team Liquid and Astralis, but dominated this event. Then... Cobblestone went out of the map pool, in came the rework DOS 2, their map pool got even better. At EPL Season 7, because remember they blew the Sydney final to FaZe Clan with Exist. At EPL Season 7, they won in dominant fashion again. This was their second win, but there's still some tournaments they didn't win. They didn't win ESL 1 Cologne, they didn't go to some of the other tournaments. IEM 13 Chicago, closer to now, towards the end of the year, they get their third win. They beat Team Liquid in another final. They beat Na'Vi in the Marseille final, Team Liquid in the EPL final, and now they beat Team Liquid in the Chicago final. And actually, no, wait a second. It was MIBR they beat in the Chicago final. Ignore that part. I don't know why I thought it was Team Liquid for a second because obviously Team Liquid went out way earlier than expected. Now, once they got this third win and became the second team to ever reach three wins, except obviously FaZe's window had closed at this point in time, they now themselves, just like FaZe Clan had, only had two tournaments left to secure the Grand Slam. They needed to win either EPL Season 8, the tournament they did win, or if they hadn't have won EPL Season 8, they would have had to have won IEM Katowice next year, which is the major. Now, obviously, that would make the accomplishment even crazier if you won it as well as the major and in those circumstances and made it back-to-back -back majors and won three majors overall for your core. Like, there's a lot of reasons why that would have been in some ways cooler, but nevertheless, they won the, the EPL Season 8. They didn't need to do that. So the bounty this time was activated for the first time. They won this tournament over Team Liquid, and actually, Team Liquid could have won $100,000 if they'd have won that final and denied Astralis the title, which, by the way, would have been a pretty cool storyline for Team Liquid, who'd lost all these finals to Astralis and hadn't won a big, massive international tournament, because not only would you get one back for yourself and win a big international tournament, but you'd get the $100,000 and you deny the team, the Astralis guys. So that would be a really cool way to spice the rivalry up as opposed to it being incredibly one-sided. Now, one of the reasons why it's even more impressive that Astralis won and even more astonishing that they did is because they didn't even prioritize the Intel Grand Slam. They skipped ESL 1 Belo Horizonte. Like that was one of the events, actually one of the easiest events in terms of competitive field that anyone won. That was the first climb with Chrome and one with Nico Hard carrying. They skipped ESL 1 New York, a pretty stacked event. But they decided to go to Blast Pro Series Istanbul because obviously their parent company, Refresh, also owns the Blast Pro Series. So they gave up, in theory, a free title that ended up luckily going to Mouse Sports, but could have gone to a Fierce Clan and reactivated them to three titles. Could have gone to a Na'Vi and put Na'Vi to two titles. Could have gone to Team Liquid and put them on their first title. They'd, they had dodged a bullet on all that. And instead, it was Mouse who won. That was the only title that they won. And Astralis just had to do it in less events. So they skipped two of the eligible events and realistically won their four tournaments out of only seven eligible events that they attended after their first win. That's outrageous. That's ridiculous that you would win that scenario. But 
is obviously, just as it would have been with the other teams, a pretty fitting cap for this team, more so than ever, because it's a fitting cap to their dominance as a team, especially doing it the hard way, but being so excellent, you can still do it. They obviously never dropped the file to Team Liquid anyway. Quite frankly, Team Liquid could have fucked them over on this last one also in that sense, made it even harder because they'd have had one tournament left. It would be the major and all that pressure. Now, interestingly enough, Dupree, I believe he tweeted something like this, even suggested that when he heard about the Intel Grand Slam, he even told, he even said something in a car journey, like, no one's winning that. And obviously in the end, ironically, he is the player that has won that Grand Slam and his team won it. But that's because when the Grand Slam was announced, they didn't have Vegas. They weren't the number one team. They weren't dominating everyone. FaZe and SK were the top teams at the time. Astralis couldn't beat FaZe. Weren't even getting to play SK most of those scenarios. Device had all his health issues. They were swapping around roles. Dupree hadn't fully taken his role back from Kirby overall. There was all sorts of reasons why, for someone like him especially, he wasn't even considering his team would win it. Then you've got to add in, as a bigger picture comment, there's not many teams that win four notable titles in an entire year. Never mind four titles in a 10 tournament span that starts with your first win. That's a very, very tough accomplishment to, to manage. And as a result, massive plaudits to, T to Astralis for being able to do it. Now, interestingly enough, it's almost like the Grand Slam was cursed before Astralis because SK took the lead initially with two titles, never made another final. Fears were the first to get to three, never made another final. Astralis got to three, won at the very next event they needed to. Kind of fucking baller, really, right? Now, I will mention a few other teams who had success within this circuit. And actually, you might have thought, might have had a crack at doing this. So believe it or not, I'm going to mention a team who didn't win a single event. It's Team Liquid. Because Team Liquid played in four finals that they lost within a seven tournament span. And I think overall, five finals that were all counted within this eligibility in terms of like the circuit, but all five wouldn't have been eligible overall. But they were just in four straight finals in the last aspect of the circuit and lost all of them. So if they'd have won all those, they would be the Grand Slam champions. Mouse Sports, who if you remember at the end of 2017 and especially early 2018, were a very dangerous team, were a placeholder top two or top three team in the world, were winning international titles. They only actually appeared in one final. It wasn't with the Stickhole lineup, their best team. It was with Snacks when they won ESL1 New York. And that was despite the fact that that wasn't even when they were considered an elite team. When they were an elite team, they actually weren't relevant within the Intel Grand Slam. They were winning their titles elsewhere. Na'Vi, who also won titles this year, who also were at one point in time a number two ranked team in the world, a very dangerous team, had the best player in the world in simple. Na'Vi actually only appeared in two finals and won one of the titles, ESL1 Cologne, where they beat Astralis in the semifinals. Obviously, a detail that's worth pointing out at the end of this video is that this isn't it. This is only season one. There's going to be a season two. It's already begun. The Grand Slam resets and it starts all over again. So presumably, I am Kanavice, the major, will be the first tournament of the next Grand Slam. So if Astralis wins that, they'll be the ones in the lead and they'll be on their way to another million dollars, potentially. Now, I think this is a pretty cool way to tie together people's accomplishments. It's a meta accomplishment. You win lots more money, which is obviously great for the pro players. And it's also smart because even though Astralis did it the hard way and didn't do this, it means that you're going to prioritize ESL events. That's why people like FaZe Clan would want to go to try and get that third win elsewhere. Why teams like SK later MIBI would want to attend every single event. Like this is a great way to make people focus on ESL events, especially once they get to two or three titles and they know the next one could be not only another win, but another million dollars. That's a great way to make someone come to your tournament instead of a rival tournament a week later or a co coinciding at the same particular time, even though Astralis were the exception to the rule in that particular sense. And I guess SK because SK also was MIBR went to Blast Pro's Eves Istanbul, even though they could have gone to ESL New York. But then again, they were that would have only been one title and got them just on the board again because they'd lost the old ones. So incredible accomplishment from Astralis and a cool feature, I think, the Intel Grand Slam. This video was kindly supported by Dean Tanglis, Andreas Snazor Westerland, Gardner Wilson, Ollie J, Tobias Bernasconi, Nate DOGG, James Harding, Kyla Harris, Travis Greb, Daniel Yordanov, and as always, a special thanks goes out to Jerky's Minion. Would you like to suggest a topic or a guest for some of my upcoming content? Perhaps you want to ask me a question in my monthly AMA. Do you want to see some teasers? See who's going to be the next guest on one of my shows? Maybe you want to take part in an esports discussion with me. Well, put your money where your mouth is and join the Skrilluminati today at the Patreon link in the description box below.